Hi there, I'm Elizabeth Watts. Recent studies show more than 70% of teens are struggling with mental health concerns, and one in four have considered suicide. Here in Colorado, it is considered a crisis. So we want to continue our focus on mental health and our teenagers and children, especially in the wake of the pandemic, which has made it even harder for them than before. For the next half hour, you'll hear from Children's Hospital working to get the government to help, school principals and counselors working to make cultural change, and from parents of Sandy Hook victims releasing alarming PSAs to get the attention of adults so we can all help our kids. High school is a challenging time and add on a pandemic to the stressors that already exist for teens. It's been a tough year. I think during the pandemic, particularly it was isolation. I think students felt very disconnected from each other, although they are hyper connected via social media and to help out during tough times. It's really a partnership between parents, the school and the student to make sure that they're successful and the conversations include mental health. Several years ago, tragedy made its way to Discovery Canyon campus as several students died by suicide. A few years later, Mark Wallstrom became the principal of the school. Previous administration and the staff and community in Discovery Canyon had already begun work and they had put in some amazing things. Academy District 20 focused on efforts to include all parts of the community, adding parent academies where families can come and learn about signs to look out for when teens are struggling with suicidal thoughts and making sure students have peer support as well. For Discovery Canyon, that includes a strengths test for students to figure out where they excel. And the students have really gravitated to it. We look for students to share with us what their talents are. When students begin with their strengths, they begin in a place of confidence. And with that confidence, they can build upon those strengths to be successful. Starting next year, every student at the school will be taking the strengths finder. Wallstrom says by focusing on what they're good at, it helps them find mentors and communities. We provide healthy activities and everything from our you know, academic activities to sports, to arts, to drama, theater, band, orchestra. One teen suicide is one too many, but unfortunately those numbers keep climbing in El Paso County. In 2020 alone, 15 were reported. Jill Davis is an empty nester. I made the decision when I had that first infant that I would always listen to them. Her four kids, now adults. It is hard to be an adolescent. Davis knows that all too well and attempted suicide at the age of 18. I didn't want to die. I just wanted the pain to stop. Two of her kids struggled with their own suicidal ideations. He knew the person to call was me because I would listen. I couldn't fix it, but I would listen to him. And I did, and all of the skills I gave him as a child, the way I got him through those three and a half hours of trying to find somebody to, to help him, I pulled out all his childhood books and I read him books. In El Paso County in 2020, 15 teen suicides were reported, 12 boys and three girls. The most common stressor listed is family discord, followed by school-related stress. And in three of the cases, COVID grief, was a factor. We need to stop sweeping things under the rug. Dr. Juliana Deans, a licensed professional counselor, has been working with kids for around two decades. Life is stressful, but slow down and pay attention to those warning signs. She says those boil down to changes in behavior like sleep patterns, having a hard time focusing, or isolating themselves. It's really the nonverbal cues that speak the loudest. The research shows most adolescents and most teenagers really want somebody to reach out to them. Parents can help by asking open-ended questions, starting the conversation, and asking for help from professionals if you're not sure how to start. A good life is messy, but a really good life is really messy, and we can always fix the mess. A living testament to light at the end of a tunnel. Always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. Co-op Bordelon News 5. Our forecast here going forward is pretty solid across the region. If you don't mind rain, so ducks, ducks are big fans of this weather. For those of us trying to enjoy Memorial Day, not so much. I mean, there's been periods where, yeah, it's been okay to be outside. If you have a jacket, you just plan on getting a little wet. There's going to be scattered showers and storms from the plains that kind of jump out of the mountains a little early. 
But some of that heavier rain we've been waiting for will be really in the mountains and valleys at about one to two o'clock, kind of starting to firm up and become more widespread. I actually think in the east half of the St. Louis Valley, maybe one or two pretty strong storms are possible as we get through the afternoon. So we're going to get just kind of these broken showers, some of them heavy at times. Like that's a pretty good sell through springs at three o'clock there, three to four. Pueblo will get some good rain, although some of the heaviest stuff is kind of looking to be south. Walsenburg back to Levita and Rye, and this moisture kicks out east into the plains, but I think tonight after 10 o'clock especially, we should be dry. We're continuing the conversation around mental health awareness all month. It's no surprise issues like depression and anxiety got worse during the pandemic and became more common. But cost and accessibility are both factors that can deter people from seeking mental health care. Most insurers do cover services, but unlike your primary care doctor, you see a therapist more frequently and those co-pays tend to add up. Dr. Skillings with the American Psychological Association says he would like to see overall health care reform in the U.S. So this isn't an issue, but for now, he suggests a number of resources if you're struggling with cost or don't have insurance. He says be sure to check with your community health center. There are often free clinics that are offered or services that are less expensive. If you're in college, look to the counseling centers on campus. Some colleges even offer their services to the public at a low cost. There's also the National Suicide Hotline, which is completely free. Um, it takes years and years to study to become a mental health practitioner, a psychologist, um, just like it does to be a physician. Um, and the services are, are expensive. Um, each of us are going through smaller traumatic events almost every day of our lives. And we now know those traumatic events are taking a toll and continue to take tolls on people. Now, aside from cost, getting an appointment with a therapist can sometimes be a long process. It can take up to a month to get in as a new patient. Then once you have that appointment, the therapist may not suit you. So you have to then start all over again. If you're having trouble getting an appointment or finding a therapist that's right for you, try not to get discouraged. Dr. Skilling says look to someone you trust in the meantime. Now we do have more information and resources posted on our website, KOAA.com. Always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. Renee Skinner, News 5. As we work to rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic, Colorado lawmakers are pushing through a bill that would provide free therapy and health screenings to children across the state. For children and young adults across the state, the pandemic has taken a heavy toll on their mental health. The virtual impacts of being unable to really connect on the same level with people. Switching to online school, like college courses, like I just feel like I've gotten robbed. With enormous disruptions to schools, social activities, and support networks, both girls say mental health resources are needed now more than ever before. COVID has given everybody or has isolated everybody to where they have sat with their demons and sometimes those demons have won. Prompting lawmakers to create House Bill 1263, which would allocate $9 million to create a temporary youth mental health services program. It would provide free screenings and three sessions with a mental health professional. The screening will tell you, okay, we're going to connect you to a professional, ideally within your insurance network. According to the bill, the Colorado Crisis Services Hotline has experienced a 31% increase in calls and texts. And Children's Hospital Colorado has seen a 10% increase in the number of kids seeking help for suicidal thoughts. When they go back to school, they're going to have a plan. How do I handle the stress and anxiety? Do I feel comfortable actually being next to somebody? The bill aiming to remove barriers for children wanting some help. A lack of um, being able to find resources or affording resources. Um, and so this bill really addresses both of those components. The program would run until June 2022 under the proposal. Always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. Mayo Davison, News 5. In our continuing coverage with our attention on teen suicide and prevention and all the mental health issues we've been addressing during the pandemic, we recently received some PSAs from Sandy Hook Promise that stopped us in our tracks. They showcase what we've been talking about all year long and the turmoil the kids have been going through. And I set out to learn more on what's behind the campaign titled, The Kids Are Not All Right.
X plus X plus one. It's tough to be a kid right now. Isolation, missed graduations and proms, staying in a bedroom 20 hours a day, missing their friends and constantly plugged in. Out overload a circuit. Plug in. These PSAs put out by Sandy Hook Promise and BBDO New York really show the anxiety, isolation, pressure, boredom and information overload that teens are experiencing. Authorities say she endured nearly a year of cyberbullying. I spoke with Mark Barden. His son Daniel was killed in the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary on December 14th, 2012. He's co-founder and managing director of Sandy Hook Promise, working to prevent future tragedies. Their call center seeing a huge uptick in life safety calls this year. Being a teenager, middle school, high school has its challenges as it is in the best of times. Um, but this pandemic and the resulting quarantine has exacerbated all of those challenges. They want to get the word out for parents and adults to be aware of any warning signs like fixation on social media, withdrawal from friends, changing friend groups, mood swings, change in behavior. These signs don't necessarily mean that your young loved one is on their way to something terrible or tragic, but they could be and certainly can help to be more aware, to be more connected. Barden says the emotional situation kids are dealing with now can give rise to various forms of youth violence, including school shootings, suicide and self-harm. Frightening headlines across America. You know, Experts say the stress right now is a recipe for a powder keg effect that might lead to more tragedies when school returns in the fall. The end of the pandemic is near. Things are going to be back to normal next year. So why is this message still important? So I think it's even more important now, Elizabeth, because students who have been existing, their social lives have been primarily uh, in a digital online uh, landscape. And so the additional stress of now re-emerging into society and and now being social face to face with their peers uh, brings a whole other set of challenges and anxiety with it. Barden says we need to be extra vigilant because there will be a new phase of transition here. He says there are almost always warning signs before things blow up and it's up to parents in our community to help protect our kids. Sandy Hook Promise wants everyone to learn the signs of someone at risk of hurting themselves or others. With its Know the Signs program, 12 million people across the country have trained on it, and because of that, they have stopped various forms of violence, school shooting plots, suicide, self-harm. We have a link to their page and all the PSAs, and you can watch my full interview right now, KOAA.com. And Sandy Hook Promise is also pushing for Congress to pass the Stand Up Act. Stand Up stands for Suicide Training and Awareness nationally delivered for universal prevention. It has bipartisan support. If passed, it would expand access to evidence-based suicide prevention training for students in 6th through 12th grades nationwide. We'll keep you posted on its progress. In today's Your Healthy Family, depression can be an overwhelming burden, especially when you feel alone. After a difficult year of isolation and stress, many adults are more conscious about mental health challenges. However, Less than half say they are very confident they can recognize if a loved one has those challenges, according to a new study that also suggests truly trying to understand depression may be one of the best ways to offer support. Should we make a bear? Yeah. When Amanda Lang began feeling depressed, she says it was hard to explain what she felt to those around her. This isn't who you are. It's this illness that's taking you over. She's not alone. In a new gene site, Mental Health Monitor National Survey, 83% of those living with depression said life would be easier if others could understand what they're going through. However, most reported they are more likely to hear statements that demonstrate a lack of understanding. Someone told me that depression wasn't real and that it was all in my head. The Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance and GeneSight are working together to help raise awareness for how depression feels. One of the, the best predictors of being able to recover from a bout of depression is to have caring others in your life. More than half of those diagnosed with depression indicate in a poll they started a new treatment since the beginning of the pandemic and half of those with depression have tried four or more medications. It can be very frustrating for a patient that has to go through a trial of medication 
over a four to six week period only to find out that that medication does not work for them. A genetic test may help doctors by providing information about how a patient's genes may affect outcomes with certain medications that treat depression, anxiety, and other disorders. Offering support by asking questions like, how can I help? Or do you want to talk? Or some of the more helpful ways to be there for someone living with depression. Always watching out for your health. I'm Ira Cronin. As we continue to rebound from the effects of COVID-19, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And a new leaf therapy here in Pueblo says the pandemic has actually normalized speaking out about one's mental health issues. Plus, the state of Colorado is taking a step in the right direction to help Colorado's youth that might be struggling. The coronavirus took a toll on everyone, especially when it comes to mental health. I think it did get so bad for people this year that they didn't really have much, a lot of people didn't have much of a choice like they had to do something about it. CEO of a new leaf therapy Reagan Young says the need for therapists has skyrocketed. Historically we've been turning away like 60 to 70 people a week for therapy just because we didn't have enough therapists to meet the needs and this year we've turned away about 150 every week. One group that's been hit the hardest is Colorado's youth. They're at a time in their lives when they like social support and peer support is like the most important thing, developmentally speaking, and they've been isolated from that. Outpatient therapist Kristen Young works closely with adolescents in Pueblo. Even just losing out on the typical prom that a senior in high school would be able to have or um, graduation ceremonies, parties. I mean, yeah, there is the big dark part of COVID, of death and loss in that way, but people are experiencing loss every single day. A new bill on the table would provide youth all over Colorado with three free mental health sessions. I was so excited. I think anytime we're increasing access to mental health care, it creates a trickle down effect for the community. The program would last for roughly one full year and a new leaf says normalizing therapy and seeking help. That's the silver lining of the pandemic because it's really been so normalized. I think therapy is it's just looked at so differently. Like who doesn't need extra support during a pandemic? It's just one surprising perk from the year of COVID-19. For more information about these new services and the way that a new leaf therapy is expanding, or if you want to go over and read the bill yourself, head over to KOAA.com and find this article. Always watching out for you, Pueblo. Natalie Chuck, News 5. There are a lot of people who will be getting help in the wake of the Preakness Way mass casualty shooting. That includes first responders. A mass shooting, police, fire, ambulance crews all on scene to help. First responders see and experience horrific things up close. Our mind stores this stuff, and if we don't have a way to release it safely, it could rear its head whenever. The term with origins from the military is post-traumatic stress. It needs attention before it becomes a disorder. We want to get in there and help people process these emotions, process the feelings, process the hurt, the grief, the fear. Um, and get rid of the stigma and say, this is okay, this is, you're human. Eric Frederick and, uh, is the wellness sergeant for CSPD. A couple of years back, he was charged with stepping up attention to mental and emotional health in the department. An improved network of resources and programs is now in place. Programs are fine, but you need staff willing to see a problem and accept some guidance. But it's okay, that is normal. May not be normal for you, but it's a normal psychological response to what you've experienced. At a scene, officers typically suppress or detach from emotions so it doesn't interfere with good rational decisions. From minor to major, those emotions can surface later. The CSPD wellness plan starts with discussions among buddies in the same section. It transitions to support from trained peer volunteers. If needed, psychologists with first responder expertise are offered at no charge. In a preemptive move following the mass shooting on Preakness Way, officers, dispatchers, and other first responders are getting an invite to a group wellness debrief. Peer support people there, we're going to have the psychologists there, we're going to have chaplains there. The help is for people on scene, also dispatchers who have to deal with this over the phone. Watching out for you, Colorado Springs, Bill Folsom, News 5.